I have the coolest job in the world. I get to work in cutting edge molecular imaging and I get to work with animals almost every day. Hi, my name is Ayman al Najjar, and science helped me push the frontier in diagnostic medical imaging. One interesting thing about my job is being able to work on the strongest MRI in the Southern Hemisphere. The magnetic field strength of the scanner behind me is 140,000 times the magnetic field of the Earth. Hi, my name's Sarah, and science helps me to understand what the body's doing on a molecular level and helps me to save lives. So what we're looking at here is a PET CT image of a dog. With this particular dog, we were looking at if there was any distant disease from a recent diagnosis of melanoma. Um, and we scanned this dog from the body to the tail. We give it an injection of a slightly radioactive dye. And what that dye does is it goes into the bloodstream and then moves into different cells within the body, depending on which type of cells we want to look at. And what happens is that dye, because it's slightly radioactive, it gives off a positron and those positrons are detected by the scanner. And then that way we can have a look at the whole body and determine where our radioactive dye has gone inside the body. No day is ever the same because we have multidisciplinary team using the MRI scanner. So one day you'll have a psychologist looking at the brain, another day have an orthopedic surgeon want to look at certain body parts with high resolution definition. Interesting fact about my job is I get to work with radioactive sugar and antimatter. So I work in PET-CT, which works with radioactive elements like uh, that give off positrons. And positron is the antimatter counterpart to the electron. At the top here is we're looking at the echidna's brain, which is where the most amount of energy is coming from because with this particular scan, we've used a radioactive form of glucose or sugar. Um, and the brain is the most metabolically active organ in the body. It, when we're looking at radioactive sugar, we know the metabolic activity of different cells throughout the body. Uh, and we can determine uh, the amount of radioactive dye in a specific area by something called the uh, standard uptake value. And when we get that participant back after therapy, we want to see that that number has dropped, which means there's less of that tracer within that area of the body. What motivates me is being able to work on groundbreaking technology that will benefit society. In my job, uh, science helps me to have a look at very small molecules within the body and we can actually work out how the body's functioning as opposed to what it looks like. The images on the left are of an echidna and you can see how the PET-CT system works with these four set of images. The black and white image, which is the CT scan, which gives us really good anatomical detail. And then on the right, we can see the PET side of the scan, um, which doesn't give us as much detail, but it gives us all the information we need about how the body's functioning. So what we do down the bottom is we get a composite image of both the CT and the PET and we fuse them together. What fascinates me about my job is being able to look at small structures in the brain that can control small movement. For example, if I move my finger, I'll be able to see the area responsible for that movement in the brain because it consumes more oxygen, so I'll be able to detect it. So there's a lot of science and chemistry involved in the production of the radiopharmaceuticals or radioisotopes that we use here. There's quite a lot of maths involved for me when I draw up my participant doses of a morning. Uh, I need to make sure that I'm giving them the, exactly the right amount of radiation to be able to get the scan done. Uh, and then engineering comes into it in developing new types of scanners. And every few years there's another development which enables us to see more than we could ever see before. To be involved in MRI research, you don't have to be a radiographer. You can be a scientist, you can be a neuroscientist, you can be a physicist, or you can be an information technology expert. So it's a multidisciplinary team that can work together to bring the best in image quality. Because of the advances done in MRI, scan times have dropped significantly. For example, 15 years ago, it used to take an hour to do an MRI scan, now probably take 10 minutes. There are so many different ways PET-CT can play a part in the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. We can give a radioactive injection so we can see where the cancer cells are within the body. Alternatively, we can use a different type of radioisotope and attach it to those cells in the body and actually kill cancer cells. I, for example, did an undergraduate degree in medical imaging. Then I came to UQ and did masters in MRI and started working in research. 
But you don't have to be a radiographer to work in research. You can do an undergraduate in physics. You can do a degree in biomedical science and do a postgraduate degree and also be involved in MRI research. So there's no single pathway to work in MRI. My biggest piece of advice to kids looking to move into university is that it's okay if you don't know what you want to be when you're older. I knew that I had a passion for science, so when I first went to university I did a Bachelor of Science and then did a whole range of different courses when I started and then I found what I really loved, which was nuclear medicine. One thing I'm most proud of is the fact that I get to have a positive impact on people's lives. The ultimate question for me is how to develop the sharpest image in the shortest time possible.